Good evening and welcome to another show of harmonics. Today's guest, one of the great bass players in the San Francisco Bay Area, if not the Western Hemisphere. That's how much I respect this man. We got none other than Jimmy Ward on our studio right now. What's up, brother? Oh, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to be here. Oh. So glad you asked me to be part of this group. Man, I like your hat. Thank you very much. I like he's in purple and he's, you know, royalty. Jimmy, man, how, you, how have you been? I'm doing really well, actually. I'm, I'm really, uh, truly blessed to be here today. Yes, you are, because you were a little bit sick, right? Uh, well, I'd say I was a little more than just a little bit sick. Uh, I actually suffered what's called a widowmaker heart attack. Wow. Uh, Tell me what that <clears throat> is. Well, uh, with me, uh, there are certain versions of it, but with me, I had 100% blockage of my LAD. Uh, ooh. Which is the, the main vein that, was that pumps the, vein, the blood all down into the rest of the body. Wow. Uh, so I had 100% blockage of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my surgeon, uh, Dr. Sabal Asai, bless him, yes, uh, bless told him. me uh, post-surgery that only 10% people that suffer that survive. Wow. So, as I said, very blessed to be here today. It is very blessed. And you know what? I'm glad that you said it earlier so that we could go into your history. Yeah. Jimmy, what really, um, I know you're a bass player, mm -hmm. but what really got you moving in the direction of music? And how low were you then? Well, when, when did it hit I, you? As, as far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I was, when I was a kid, my, my mother is a singer. Okay. Uh, my grandfather is a guitar player, and he was actually one of the original members of the Sons of the Pioneers. Wow. Amazing. Uh, and he toured with them for a while, mm -hmm. um, and Lyle Powers was his name. Mm -hmm. He toured with them for a while, and he left the band because of my grandmother. Woman always does it. Yeah, it's, all, you know, <laughs> it's always the woman. But uh, so I, I have, you know, my my, my uncles uh, all were musicians. Uh, my uncle Fred, my uncle Pete, they're all musicians. You know, as far back as I can remember. Uh, my mom would buy me six-string acoustic guitars at garage sales when I was a, a baby, wow. and I'd just drag them around with me everywhere I go, whatever. whatever. I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but, you know, I was still doing it, and right. I'm making noise and right. breaking string. I didn't care. Yeah, right. You know, I'm just a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and then it actually, at six years old, mm -hmm. is when I really started learning music. Seriously? Yeah, I started playing trumpet Okay. Uh, in, ba in school band. Beautiful. Uh, That's I what actually you need. had a beautiful coronet. Uh, it was beautifully etched, uh, filigreed, mm -hmm. that my uncle Pete loaned to me uh, to start on. Right. Uh, and I played coronet and then piano uh, up until about ten years old. Interesting. And then I discovered a little band called Kiss. How many thousand? In, in 1975. Wow. Was, was that year? Yeah. Um, and I wanted a guitar. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I ended up buying a guitar at a garage sale, mm -hmm. some Montgomery Ward's Harmony, whatever right, it was, right, right, right. had the switches anyway, and mm -hmm. I, I started learn, teaching myself guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I just exploded from there. I joined my first band at 11 years old that was called Open Current. Great name. Uh, yeah. Great uh, name. <clears throat> then uh, later on, we... That band changed to Jade East, and we started playing all the high school amphitheaters around the East Bay, mm -hmm. uh, San Leandro High, Pacific High, no longer there. Of course. Hayward High, Tennyson High, mm -hmm. Alameda High. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that was where those were the roots of my beginning. That's the foundation. Yeah. That was the foundation. That was the foundation. So did you, when you were playing this, and you, were you playing just guitar, or were you playing bass at that time? So I started out in the band as a guitar player. Okay. And uh, at about 13 years old, we had three guitar players in the band. 
Interesting. And a uh, matter of fact, one of those guys was Mark McGee. Oh, Mark McGee's a great guitar him player. Him and I actually started playing guitars together, started really getting serious. Mark is such a you know, he's amazing, beautiful person. Amazing musician, beautiful yeah. person, one of my best friends mm -hmm. for life. He's my mm -hmm. brother. Excellent. Another brother. He, he was on the show. I'm glad you're seated in a seat that he mm -hmm. almost well, sat in. Well, it's, it's an honor to be in the yeah. same seat as Mark. You know, one of my best friends. Wow. One of the greatest guitar players probably on the planet. Most definitely. Yeah, just Him amazing and his, talent. His wife, Nicole, just beautiful people. Beautiful people, great mm -hmm. band, love mm -hmm. Planet. Go see them. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, after about, I think I was probably about 13 years old, mm -hmm. I decided that I needed to play bass because I was basically playing bass on guitar anyway. Oh. So I found this uh, six-string bass, and it was actually another Harmony Montgomery Ward mm -hmm. special. Okay. Um, and I bought the, I restrung it. I bought all my strings from uh, Thin Man String Company in Alameda, a very, okay, very famous that. music store in right, Alameda. Right. I restrung that whole thing up as a, as a, a, I had a, I had a low E on it, and it went all the way up to high E. So I basically strung it up like another guitar, but with fatter strings. Mm -hmm. So I played that for a while, uh, and then I found my first four string, mm -hmm. uh, which was also another harmony. Imagine wow, that's that. a, well, everything was coming in harmony. Everything yeah. was coming in harmony, right. exactly. Um, so from there, that's where my, my bass journey started, was about 13 years old. And that's when you just, were you picking, were you learning like Kiss songs? What songs were you learning around in 75 or 70? Well, well, 75, it was all about Kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. uh, and Deep Purple. Deep Purple was great. You great know, those band. were... Uh, that was the, your triumph. Those were the bands mm -hmm. that, that really pushed me into playing playing music mm -hmm. and, and pushed me in, kind of pushed me into the musician I turned out to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What changed your life? What was really the glowing part after that, after you said learning? Uh, were you there in 77 when, when a couple great bands played at the Oakland Coliseum? Mm -hmm. And you know, that was Judas yeah. Priest, ACDC, Van Halen, yeah, yeah. Foreigner, yeah, yeah. Pat Travers, uh -huh. and Aerosmith. I was at that show. Did that change anything in your that, dynamic? That show, well, actually the show before that, mm -hmm. that really shaped my trajectory into the music world mm -hmm. was Boston at the Oakland Great Coliseum. Vocals. Great vocals. Uh, yeah, it was our first time here. Mm -hmm. uh, that was 76, I believe. That was in, uh, that was in the arena, In right? the arena, yeah, it was indoors. They were, mm. That was, mm -hmm. oh, that, that show, I, I still remember I still remember the pipe organ coming up out of the stage, <laughs> and Tom Schultz, whoa, being a fan of the opera. Right, you know? right. uh, and, and that was that show, really checked you, right? Checked there. me and said, oh, that's 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 where I want to be. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I want to be doing." Mm -hmm. So when when that time period came, were you in a band or were you going to get ready to start into? Was this your place to move? forward uh, you know still as a young young kid young 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 person mm -hmm. did you move into that direction and, and started really figuring out and finding the bands that you, you as you travel along in your musical landscape at that time at that time I was already in a band and what was that band that again? was open current that was open current yeah Wait, so that you guys was were together uh, for a while that was Scott Raleigh uh, uh, Sky Clems uh, Keith Davis was our drummer mm -hmm. Uh, and Mark McGee. And we practiced in my garage on San Jose and Fountain Street in Alameda mm -hmm. uh, and drove my neighbors crazy. crazy. <laughs> and and I, I always remind, they'd come over and they'd pound on the garage door and, and, I, and I, I remember as a kid I, w I had enough foresight to say, hey, at least we're not out causing trouble. You know, we're in here making noise. We're not outside causing trouble. So, right. you know, you got Did that they going down then? Yeah, sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We were pretty loud. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. So what were you guys doing? Were you writing your own? Or we were, were writing all original music. Amazing. And it was, uh, you know, it was very basic. Sure. You know, uh, two and three chord, uh, two part progression rock, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were doing our own stuff. Were you doing extended leads? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'd be playing, oh, let's play the solo over this part for 20 mm -hmm. minutes, you mm -hmm. know. So, yeah. So in that journey, where did you go next? So after mm -hmm. that, that uh, we kind of stepped up from that, and we turned into uh, sort of a power trio, mm -hmm. and turned the band turned into the, uh, Jade East. Was, okay, was the name of the band. Mm -hmm. and that was Sky Clems, uh, uh, and we had Mitch Williamson on drums, mm -hmm. 
and Scott Raleigh on vocals and me on bass. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started doing the, the amphitheaters of the high schools oh, of the okay. East Bay. That's when that all started, mm -hmm. about 78, 79. I was mm -hmm. 13, 14 years old. Wow. And a matter of fact, my very first gig was at Lincoln Middle School. And I was in eighth grade still, and that was my school. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark and I uh, cut school that day <laughs> to, to play at the amphitheater at Lincoln Middle School. Uh, and uh, that, was a, that was a big, huge day, 1979, actually. Wow. And how long did that band, before you progressed to another, like say in the 80s, what were you doing then in, in the 90s? Because we're way, you know, you're yeah, deep into Yeah, so about 82, was, there was another shift, mm -hmm. and that kind of fell apart, and uh, uh, Sky actually died. Oh, he, yeah, young. Uh, he, he, well, he, he delved into some things at that age, and he was, he was like three or four years older than I was. Mm -hmm. and he delved into some things that really uh, put him on a bad track, mm -hmm. um, and he died very soon after that. Mm. Um, yeah, I have a lot of good memories about him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, <clears throat> and I get choked up still of thinking course, about man, it. Of course, man, yeah. Uh, so, so that kind of uh, broke the whole JD's thing apart. And then I joined, I, I actually moved out to Hayward at that point. Oh, now you're into another scene. And then I moved into another scene uh, with, with Sean McAllister, uh, Kerry McAllister's brother. Right. Uh, and, uh, and Basil Youssef, I don't know, you know if you know who I've Basil heard of the name, is. Right? Great guitar player. Right. Uh, and, and myself and uh, Sam Randazzo I'm on no drums, mm -hmm. a great drummer from Castro Valley. Yes, yes. And we practiced up on Kelly Hill, and that band was called Hit and Run. Okay. And we did all original materials, and uh, we played a lot of you know, open parties in Fremont, Hayward, San Jose, mm -hmm. and uh, San Leandro, you know, the, the garage parties, mm -hmm. the keggers. The, the keggers, man, the, they were the best. The hay bale rides in the Fremont Farms and Livermore Farms. You know, too, yeah. we did that whole scene. Uh, and that lasted a couple of years. Um, and then I joined a heavy metal band uh, with John Thomas, K.O. Caillou, uh, and, and, and Tommy Sanzone called Mean Time. And that was when we. Uh, broke into doing like the Stones, and 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 Uncle Charlie's, and, wow. uh, uh, the, uh, the, I can't remember the club, the other club in San Rafael. Um, but oh, we, uh, Roof sixty six. No, no, no. Roof no, that was Burlingame. Yeah, that's Burlingame. We didn't play that, but well, we did. You know, we did a lot of stuff up in Marin. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot of. We did the Stone yeah. and the Rock on Broadway mm -hmm. and the Mabuhe, oh, and, you know, that whole scene right. uh, in the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. And that, that ran through uh, until about 19, I say that, that band probably lasted until about 86. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got into a little band called Agony Sweet. That was a pretty big name around here at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And that was more towards the late 80s. Mm -hmm. There was a stint in there that's kind of gray mm -hmm. because I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. I understand. You know. Yeah. We, we all do things we shouldn't be doing sometimes. That's very true. You know, <laughs> uh, we all make our own decisions. So that, there's a little gray yeah, area yeah. in there in the, from the, the mid-80s up until uh, almost the late 80s there. That's kind of fuzzy for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the later 80s, 88 was when I joined Agony Suite. And we mm -hmm. did a, a lot of headlining shows, the Omni. and Great you know, place to play. Oh, I love the Omni. Mm -hmm. Great room, historic room. Mm, historic so room. many great bands played oh. there. You know, seen many great bands yeah, there. Yeah, I think uh, it just fell out. Yeah, just well, bombed out. Yeah, bombed out. John Nady kind of, kind of actually just squashed the whole scene. Right. Very soon after that, ninety two. It I think. just crushed it. Yeah, he 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 closed. He owned the Stones, mm -hmm. all the Keystones, mm -hmm. and he owned the Omni, mm -hmm. and he just decided vanished. I'm done. Yeah, I I don't know why he did that. Um, and I was he, getting he ready. Was to he actually, I know I know why. Mm -hmm. I actually asked him. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I got to sit down and talk to them for a long mm -hmm. time. I actually became one of their endorsed artists later on in life, mm -hmm. Native Systems and mm -hmm. such. And I got to talk to John, and he's a really brilliant man. I he's mean, a brilliant. That probably one of the most brilliant brains on our planet, quite most frankly. Most definitely. Um, and he, he's a very personable uh, guy when you get mm -hmm. close to him mm -hmm. and he, and he mm -hmm. likes you. Yes. If he doesn't like you, that's a different story right. for another day. Right. But um, he, he closed those clubs because he was, he was just done. He's like, I was just done. 
Play just wipe my hands with it. He was in a band. Was it the Band of Gypsies? What was his early band called? Because mm. he opened up for my band, Peak, at one time. And he was outside, and he's playing the bass. And I walked up to him. I go, what is this? And he goes, it's like a radio. I invented this. And I'm going like, yeah. Never, he's like 40 feet away. Yeah, from his amp and no cable. And he's, and there's Got this nothing, little antenna sticking right. out of it. Yeah, with a little box. I've always wanted to get him. Um, we did a um, recording in expressions and we went by the you know right when you go off uh to get in the emeryville it's right his shop's right off it was right yeah, off right the, next door yeah right and i wanted always to get john on and i haven't been able to get in contact with him but yeah i think he's pretty much um away he huh? well he's retired yeah you know he's he's out he, of he's done it all. everything he's done he's, yeah, he's he's set and he's done yeah he's done That's and right. he's done i think he does some uh, he does some charity stuff still mm -hmm. but he's he's really low-key very low key. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I can't get a hold yeah. of him some way. I, yeah. I, I, I went try to go through it, but back to you. So yeah. then you you went to um, in the nineties, yeah, and then you started moving up, and um, you started playing with different bands too. I mean, yeah. you've you've really you've really had a long career of just moving around and yeah. playing. Yeah. So and you know, after Agony Sweet, uh, that was eighty nine to ninety. That was through eighty eight to ninety one. Mm -hmm. Was that stint? Mm -hmm. Uh, then I joined a band uh, <coughs> out of Oakland <coughs> called Hell and Back. I remember them. And that was a very, uh, very heavy, very progressive, uh, very intricate uh, Dream Theater meets Queensryche mm -hmm. um, with Little Pantera is the <laughs> best way I can describe it to you. <laughs> okay. That was like 91 mm -hmm. to 94. Mm -hmm. uh, and that band had... Uh, some great players. Some really amazing. Yeah. Rich Faddis, mm -hmm. a great guitar player, uh, was a, the original guitar player. And that story, that story comes up again later on. But mm -hmm. we'll, let me, let's continue mm -hmm. on it. Then we had uh, Dan, I called him Dan the Screaming Man. Bryant <laughs> uh, was he's just <laughs> amazing. Like Dan the Screaming Man. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dave Swindig on keyboards and, and other electronic mayhem. Mm -hmm. And then Jimmy Wells on drums. Oh, Jimmy Wells is a oh. great drummer. Monster, Jim Wells, yeah, monster, monster. Uh, still one of my best friends to mm -hmm. this day. Got to get him on the show. You too, do. Man. You yeah. got to get Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy Wells, Wells on here. Man, I've he's seen had, him play, man. He's had a career. Oh, he's had a career. So that went on, and we we were uh, actually real close mm -hmm. to to pot just exploding. Mm -hmm. And at that time, again, making bad choices for myself mm -hmm. was a uh, uh, I was really bad drinking, just just mm -hmm. horrible. Horrible mm -hmm. drinking in the early '90s. You were in the pool of liquid courage. I was I was swimming in the bottle. Yeah, you were in the bottle. I was swimming in it mm -hmm. every day, all day, all night. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, you know, needless to say, I was pretty drunk on stage. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was actually doing uh, another part of that whole stint was I started playing in the bars, the bar scene of of, of Alameda mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to uh, be a B team member of the Alameda All Stars at that time, mm -hmm. uh, and I also played in a, a bunch of other miscellaneous bands. Uh, local cover bands. Jam it in was one of the names of the band. Damn it, Jim was another name of a band. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody in the band was named Jim. So, mm -hmm. oh, damn it, Jim is too many Jim's in the band. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and that was that stint with with Pit, uh, with with Helen back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were actually, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, after Helen Back was a band called Pigs. Mm. And that was 90 f 93 to, that only lasted a couple of years, mm. 93 to end of 94 mm -hmm. actually. But that band mm -hmm. was on also on the verge of mm -hmm. exploding. Mm -hmm. And we actually had a gig. We were playing the Alameda Saloon. Mm -hmm. I know exactly. Now defunct, it was a great stage, right. big room. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> David Geffen came in to see us that night. Oh, amazing. David Geffen flew to the Bay Area that day mm -hmm. to come and see the band Pigs. Mm -hmm. That was Ryan Logsdon, um, uh, 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 Mike Webb on guitar, and Jimmy Wells on drums. Good and lineup. That was an explosive band. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a big show. Uh, we did a lot of big things, and like I said, David Geffen came to see us. He mm -hmm. wanted to sign us that day. Mm -hmm. You didn't do it. Well, he well, saw how drunk, drunk their bass player got. 
Oh. He didn't like that. You were and really he drunk. came up, and I remember this, even as drunk as I was, he came up to me, and this moment will stick with me forever. Mm. And he looked me in the eye, and he said, man, you really need to knock that crap off. Wow. You're really doing Did yourself you? no favors. Did you do that? Well, that's the next chapter. May 7th, 1995, mm -hmm. After that gig, kind of the whole pigs thing kind of fell mm -hmm. apart. Um, they all realized how bad I was, and mm -hmm. I realized how bad I was, and and so I just kind of stepped away. And they 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 hired cornbread. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that pinch. Yeah, and uh, so I stepped down, and I was still playing in the bars every night. You mm -hmm. know, that was back when we were playing five seven nights a week. You know, that was your life, and that was my life. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, at that time, I was running a carpet cleaning company. <laughs> as, as my day gig. I was a carpet cleaner, uh, a repairman. Well, you had to do have something. Had to have something. Right. Um, and I did that for a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I did that from high school all the way up until Good about 95. Mm -hmm. When I blew my right knee out laying carpet. I had no meniscus in my right knee. Oh. Um, so May 7th, 1995, I'm mm -hmm. playing in the bars every single night, mm -hmm. five to seven nights a week with all these different cover bands. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rocksteady, Betty, mm -hmm. uh, my band, I call it the Psycho Ward. Uh, you know, we, we had uh, all kinds of different... Right, right. There was, th there was so much incest going on with all these bands. Everybody played with everybody back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. and, and I was playing with all kinds of people. Right. And May 7th, 1995, mm -hmm. I woke up with the hangover to end all hangovers. That was it? That was it. Good for you. I haven't touched alcohol since. Good for you because that's what it takes sometimes. You, you know that you gotta. You got to click. You, the the yeah. thing's got to click in your brain, mm -hmm. and you got to make it happen for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fact of life. Mm -hmm. With anything that you want to happen for yourself, anything you want to do for yourself, it has to be you. You have to set your own brain. Mm -hmm. That's what it takes. So you know we're moving with t with time. I wanna I'm gonna switch some I'm gonna switch some okay. gears with you. No problem. Um, you used to be uh, at the Oakland Coliseum. Oh yeah. What was that band, that band, you played almost every, I think you played almost every home game for a while, for years. We did, from 1999 mm -hmm. uh, through 2012. You were the band outside. We were the band that played, it was the South Shield tailgate party, which was in the C lot. We called it the Clot. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to laugh when you told me the B lot. Oh, I'm in the blot. Uh, <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, so... We played, it was right at the, right at the entrance in the, the farthest southwest corner of the Oakland Coliseum. Oh, I understand. Lot. Every Raider ga home game, mm -hmm. we played in that parking lot, rain or shine. Yeah, you guys were, uh, were massive because people were there listening yeah, to we, you Yeah, hundreds guys. of people would stop mm -hmm. and come and see us. By the way, the band's name was Raiderhead. Isn't that cool? Raiderhead. Yeah, it was all one word and, and no A in head, H-E-D. Oh, really? Raiderhead, all one word. Wow. And how, were you getting paid for that, or were basically you just did that because you, you've you been an outstanding Raider fan? Uh, you know, uh, we had a tip bucket. You made good money. Uh, well, sometimes you we had did. To. Yeah, yeah, I uh, mean, there uh, were people dropping hundreds in there sometimes, you know. Right, right. But we weren't in it for the money. No, you were we, in it we for We were money. Raider fans. Right. And, and th with that band, every, every song mm -hmm. was either about the Raiders or, or their opposing teams and how much they stunk. Yeah. Every song. And it was kind of a Weird Al thing mm -hmm. where we took uh, other artists' music and, and switched it around and made their lyrics about the Raiders or their opposing teams mm -hmm. and how much they stunk. <laughs> so, like, That's for great. example, right. I'll just give you some examples. Yeah, right, right. Um, like who the Chiefs? Who were the Chiefs was, yeah. uh, was, was uh, Mountain. Mississippi Queen, Mississippi Queen, Kansas City Chiefs, what's up with your team? <laughs> right? So uh, it was very uh, uh, ingenious, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Van Ortega mm -hmm. was the main writer. Mm -hmm. He was the brain behind that whole scene. Mm -hmm. Keyboards, vocals. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Michael Stoner Dude Masonette on drums. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, Bob Jordan on guitar. Uh, and Mutt, uh, Andrew Masonette on General Mayhem and vocals. Wow. And we had a lot of fun. That band, mm -hmm. you know, that was a, a big stretch mm -hmm. um, that we did probably... Yeah, 13 years. 13, 13 years. years the other part of that mm -hmm. was we had records. We, we released 
we oh, release that's CDs. Yes. Um, that you you know they're out of print. Good luck. You might yeah, find yeah. stuff online. You or might find it on my SoundCloud page. Right. Uh, but that's that stuff is you know hard to find. What? But it's a lot of fun to listen to still. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we did that. We, the other thing we did with that band is <laughs> every Saturday night before the home games, we were playing at Ricky's Raiderland. Wow, Ricky. As the house band. Ricky and, was great. And rest, in man. rest in peace, Ricky. No, really, rest in peace, rest Ricky. Rest in peace, Ricky. He was what a, great a club. Man. What a, what a club. Uh, I mean, even when the Raiders weren't here from mm -hmm. 83 to 95, it was, mm -hmm. you know, he was still a Raider, a Raider bar. He was always, he was, wa just walking in that yeah. room, you, you were, he welcomed everybody, even of, you know, and there was, and, and there was times where it was just so loud in there. Oh, yeah. It's loud. You couldn't even hear yourself yeah. think. It's, it's the Raiders. You know, sometimes somebody asked me just recently, why are you a Raider fan? I go, where else is there? Yeah. You know, but they're losing. So what, man? Yeah. It's still Once my team. Once a Raider, always, always a, Raider. a Raider. right? Right. So I'm going to change it up a little more. Right. You played with, uh, you, you had a, a super group also with Jimmy Wells and Terry Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. and um, Mary Carey. Oh God, you guys were tough. You got to get her on singer too. Yeah, I, I really do. She got lucky. She got she actually um, uh, got to interview uh, Santana a couple of oh, years yeah. back. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she yeah she is she's great. I don't know what she's doing now that she's, she's been kind of quiet. She's a great talent. She's mm -hmm. actually this Saturday night playing with Cruella at Vinny's. She's back in Cruella. She well Cruella. She's, I should she's say. filling in right now. Oh okay. She's a, she's a great guitar player. Great guitar player, great person. One of my best. I was just going to say. One of my she, best. I got to get her on. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about that band because you had Jimmy Wells, uh -huh. Terry, Terry you, Lauderdale, and Mary, uh, Mary Carey, and myself on mm -hmm. bass. Mm -hmm. That was the Terry Lauderdale band, mm -hmm. and we did a lot of big shows. You right? did hell we, of big we did shows. A lot of big shows. Did a lot of huge outdoor festivals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we, you know, we opened up for big national acts like the Lynch Mob, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, 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 Corbin Burn. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot of big shows, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of great music. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry Lauderdale, uh, phenomenal. He's been on the show. Phenomenal player. Uh, just one of my favorite guitar players to yeah. play with. Seriously. Just has that great tone. Mm -hmm. Could play Van He's Halen. A blazer. He's a blazer. He is a blazer. Terry, you're a blazer. Yeah, Terry, you're a blazer. I love you, man. Um, let's go to another guy that I when I seen you uh, we opened up for you guys it was a, uh, at the St. James Gate you played with Art and Rhonda uh -huh. and you played with in your rhythm section was none other than the great Leonard, Leonard Hayes. Hayes Leonard and I go back 50 yeah. years and I, God bless you Leonard wherever yeah, you are rest in peace Leonard um, tell me how that was you guys were around for you guys played for a while on that yeah too. we we, uh, we did a few shows uh, Art and Rhonda you know, always an honor to be with the king and queen of the mm -hmm. Bay Area rock totally. scene. Totally. You know, I mean, uh, whenever you're with them, you're in good company. You're in good company. You know, and then, of course, people. you know, you bring Leonard Hayes in, in on that deal, Shh. and, you know, he's just, you know, he's Leonard Hayes. He's Leonard. <laughs> right. Right? You know, right. so you, you can't go wrong with that. No. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We wrote some tunes together. We mm -hmm. played a few covers. Right. But we had a lot of fun, and yeah. it was really an honor to play with Leonard, you know, and, mm -hmm. and to back up on that Leonard story, I don't know if you guys He's can see this. He's a great baseball this, player. But he was. Mm -hmm. But I have a Leonard Hayes' autograph permanently etched on my finger right here. Really? See that? Interesting. What is Leonard that? Leonard Hayes did that to me the f right when he was fired from Y&T the first time. Uh -huh. He came to work for me as a carpet layer. <laughs> and I was... <laughs> I was showing him how I to. to I was showing, I'd like to see that, oh, man. I, I was showing him how to use a bloody mirror. Right, right. And, he, and, he, and, he, and I and was working you. on this corner. I didn't see him coming at me, and oh. and it, and and it was it was like Monty Python. He was, was in a very good a carpet layer. Not then. not a good look for a carpet layer on new, on new carpet, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so let's move back up. I'm sorry. I yeah, you know what? But, but that's a great story because Leonard and I. Played a show. His one of his first shows when he was in the Mustangs. Mm -hmm. I was in a band, uh, the award-winning band called uh, The Morning Rain. At that time, we became friends all our lives. Uh, I did his last interview, which was really sad to see him how he deteriorated. Yeah, with his, with his, with and his then we eventually did with Earthquake and Bad Boy Eddie mm -hmm. Blue Voodoo. We actually did the circle. We actually um, did his uh, his memorials concert at Vinnie's, yeah, yeah. and then John Nyman came in later in the night. We did uh, uh, with Johnny O'Day and Earthquake, and I mm -hmm. sang background. Mm -hmm. We did Dirty Girls. Uh, it's sad that he was because he was such a such a such a huge piece, piece. Of, of all of that, and I, and I'm just honored to say that I knew the guy personally. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and I got to play music with him. Yes. Uh, you know, that was a big part of my musical mm -hmm. career was just being on stage with Leonard. Oh, he's on any level, uh, is, uh, it's an he's honor. A, it's you know, an guy, honor. He's, a, he's, he's a rock guy. He's, he is a rock guy. <laughs> he's a, that that uh, foot, you know, nobody, yeah, can, yeah, yeah, nobody can touch that stuff. No, no, no. Still, he just to this had day. The, to this day. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the direction you're doing? You just got married about a couple of years ago, right? Yep. To a beautiful uh, Tina. Tina Ward, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tina Ward. Sorry, <laughs> Tina. You know. Uh, <laughs> she, she, uh. She's she's brought a lot of light mm -hmm. and beauty into my life. Mm -hmm. You know, she's. Uh, uh, I, she's you always a, have a smile when you talk about. I, her. Well, I, I can't know, help myself yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, quite frankly, you know, and I, I I mentioned this to you already yeah. when we were talking before we started this. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the only woman I've ever met that has no malice. Isn't that beautiful? That's, That's rare. That's a beautiful thing, and it's very rare. Mm -hmm. I love you, Tina. Ooh, Tina. That's great, man. So, um, what is the direction Jimmy's doing right now? What is Jimmy? So, I know you're here, but what I'm, are you? I'm right here doing? with you right now. Right. Yeah. So, what is what is your direction right now? now? What's going on with me right now mm -hmm. musically mm -hmm. is um, I've been doing. I, I met a guitar player uh, uh, last year named John Goodwin out of mm -hmm. Vacaville, mm -hmm. and uh, we started this band. We got this young guy on drums, Cajun Adam. It's always good to have young blood on and drums. John man. Goodwin on guitar, he's a phenomenal player, great songwriter. Mm -hmm. Him and I really meld well together. Mm -hmm. The band is called the Flying Axe Guild. Interesting. Are you doing your own music? Or are you doing a couple all covers? Original, uh, all original. Mm -hmm. uh, we're throwing some of my songs in there. Mm -hmm. I'm actually taking on some lead vocal duties. Good for you. I really just kind of started, uh, prior to this, my band was the Mutual of Alameda's Wild Kingdom. Uh, and animals. I wanted to chat about that for just a yeah, moment. Tell there were some very important people in that band as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Fee Folletti on drums. Uh, Pat Duffy and also Bob Jordan was the original guitar player from Raiderhead. Uh, but Pat Duffy was our guitar player. Uh, Michael Dion on vocals. And Viv Savage, David Caffinetti on keyboards. Oh, you had a band. Oh, we that band was yeah, tight. Was t yeah. And, and we, we, we had did a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, had a good following. We put out a few CDs, mm -hmm. um, but that kind of fell apart through COVID, mm -hmm. uh, and I b was in limbo for most of COVID up until mm -hmm. the end of 21, mm -hmm. when when I met uh, John Goodwin, and we just kind of reconnected. We, him and I really connected really well immediately, mm -hmm. and he said, "Hey, I got this tune. I need somebody to lay bass down. A song called Ice Age." I like that. That I and like it's that very. Tune intricate very fast i call it math rock mm -hmm. and it's very heavy mm -hmm. uh, 162 beats per minute it's pretty and fast. you're really fast it's really fast yeah um what key are you in that that's a new 440e mm. um but there's a lot of a lot of notes going on mm -hmm. there. yeah you're speed dialing. we're, we're speed dialing. You're, you're speed dialing and, and, and we're there we're releasing right now that band mm -hmm. It, we're recording a bunch of new new material mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. uh, and we're I, we just released we released Ice Age back in, I believe that was June. Mm -hmm. uh, we just released a new song in, in October on October sixth. Mm -hmm. You can find it on YouTube, called Trinity. And that is uh, it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. It's not nearly as fast as Ice Age is, right. uh, it's very melodic, it's, it tells a beautiful story, it's all instrumental rock. Oh, all of the, all, the, whole, the whole band is, there's not very, very little vocal? There's few songs that I'm going to, I'm going to be mm -hmm. singing mm -hmm. that we're working out right now. Mm -hmm. And we're actually looking to start gigging in December. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at right Club now. Club scenes, Club trying scenes, to get in, wherever trying you to get, get in, in there. Just any, any gigs we can get right now. Right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. and, and we're playing one-hour sets, 45-minute yeah, set, sets. 45-minute sets. That's always you know, so we, good. We could actually you know, do an hour and a half set. We I, have that much material. F for me personally, I'd like to just do, uh, instead of, you know, sometimes you have to break it up, you mm -hmm. know, you're, I'd rather just do a 45-minute set yep. or an hour, and then you're done, then you're man. Done. Yeah. Uh, and I wish the club owners, because the club owners don't know, I hate to say it, but you really don't know how to do shit because you ain't paying us the right way. I've made more money in the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s than yep. I do when I go out. Yeah, you're still making 1979 wages. Right, right. right. So um, it's really important that, yeah, I wish they would start earlier uh, like Graham used to do. Yeah. Graham started the show, and they're yeah. out. everybody's out by 12. Everybody's out by 12. But minute. I know they want the money for the yeah. booze. And oh, I, yeah. But Jimmy, you know, as we get along, um, I want to thank you for coming here because you're such a, a positive person. You got a great smile, man. You're looking good with your hat and your purple. Um, 
Before we go, I just want to, because he's a big Raider fan, and I've been a Raider fan all my life. A great Raider passed the la- yesterday, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray, Guy. Ray Guy. Ray Guy was the greatest punter in my mind. I'm sure he'd agree mm-hmm. uh, ever in uh, football history. Yep. He's the only punter in the Hall of Fame. Yep. And uh, I listened to John Madden yesterday talking about Ray Guy. So this this will be dedicated. We'll put a we'll t- uh, t- tag it at the end of this uh, Jimmy w- uh, Awards. Uh, show, but Jimmy, thank you for coming well, it's on. It's been man. an honor. Thank you for to, having me. Thank you, man. We got a lot of friends. We got to have to. I have to get a lot of personal friends. So uh, if you're looking to the camera, and you're gonna say I love you to Tina, or and I'm gonna say I love you to Victoria. I love you, Tina. Jimmy and I would like to say good night. Thank you for coming on. Peace and love to all.